I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and mine knows me. As I said to you in the beginning of this Mass, today is the fourth Sunday of Easter and is called the Sunday of the Good Shepherd. Also, the Church reserved this Sunday to pray for vocations, especially to the priesthood. In the first, uh, first reading today, we encounter Peter. But after he healed the cripple at the temple, he was questioned what power and in what name are you doing what you are doing? And Peter took the floor and say, O leaders of the Jews, it is in the name of Christ of Nazareth that you put on the cross and we testify he is alive. In his name, this man that you are seeing healthy comes to help, comes to recover from his crippleness. And now, O leaders, you are supposed to be the builders but the builders has rejected the cornerstone, has rejected the one that the Father has sent, and he is the cornerstone, he is the foundation on which he built his church. And there is no other name under heaven that we are going to be saved but in the name of Jesus. In the Gospel today, we find Jesus compare himself as the good shepherd. And he is saying this because the one who came before them, before him, were not shepherds. They were people who their game was their own. And that's why he said, I know my sheep, and my sheep knows me. And he said, and I lay my life for the one I love. Because that's what the Father sent me to do, to not, not lose anyone that he has given me. Now many of you say, we don't have experience of a farm, of a, of a shepherd. How can we understand the words of Jesus? And that is true. I come from my experience because we were in the, in the farm and I come from that experience. Now first of all, when you are in a big, as we say, vast land that the, the Palestine is, some group of shepherds will come together and they go and gaze their entire flocks together. And that night, they will put them all in an enclosure so that there will be no harm to the sheep, especially the young ones and those who are uh, nursing and those who are a little bit sick. And so they put them all in this enclosure and they take turns so that they will watch that no wolf and no other prey will come to destroy them. And we know that even the, the shepherd lay in the threshold of that encounter so that the wolf has to go to him, over him, to go to the sheep. And that's why Jesus said, I will lay down my life like he did. And that's why we have that beautiful banner there speaking about the shepherd because he is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who was slain for us this Easter. And that's why Jesus himself really testified that he will lay his life for the one he loves. Now I'm going to tell you some of my experience. When we were young, my father always gave instructions before he goes to work, or he tell my mother to tell us, because he leaves early, that we have to go and feed the sheep and water them before we go to school, or we go to mass. So we have to go. And you know, when you are, you know, half sleepy, you go and throw the, the, the food there and change the water and move on. And the sheep knows that we are not there because we love them. In fact, my younger, my next brother, he used to go and harass them. And they used to go hiding in the corners and, and cry. But the other thing is, they know the voice of my father. Because he will be miles away when they know he is coming. Because they will be at the gate watching. And when they hear their vo his voice, they are all full of joy. He know, he know them by name. He called them by name. I don't know why he named them, but that's what he does. And he will call the white and the black one and the brown one. And all of them, like excited, come to, uh, shaking their tail and come because they are now going to be fed. The same food we give them, the same water we give them, but there is that, as we say, tenderness. And they will come around him, and they put their head around him. 
And even when we go to shepherd, to shepherd them, you will see that when he called, that he is going to take them to pasture, when he opened the stable to go out, or the place where they are, they will put their head down and they will follow him. And there is no need of dog and there is no need of, of stick, nothing. They follow him like they trust him with all their lives. And that is exactly what Jesus is trying to say to us. That we have to trust him and be obedient to him because his voice is our guide. His word is our direction. And that's why he said, they hear my voice and mine they will follow. And me they follow. And that is exactly what, the, what is all about that gospel. But I'd like to concentrate today on that second reading that is so powerful. Written from St. John as he go into the crisis of his church. Church at the time that he is writing roughly about 70, 80 after Christ. is experienced some hardship of the teaching. They are denying that Jesus was divine. And St. John wrote again in these last two Sundays, and today he's going to give us more in-depth of whom we are, the relationship with the Father. And here we go. See what the love of the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God. Now if we are children of God, we are God. Do you agree? If we are children of God, we are God. And here is trying to prove a point. The point is that we become children because of one son, and that is Jesus Christ. He comes from heaven purposely to teach us that his father is our father, that his God is our God. It's not what he said to Magdalene when he, appeared, when he rose from the dead, when she said to him, Rabbi, and she wants to cling to him, he said, don't touch me. Go to my brothers and tell him, I am going to my father and your father to my God and your God. And that's why we become children, because if he is the son who called his father our father, in fact, he teaches us that when we pray, we say, our father who art in heaven. So all of us are brothers and sisters with one father, and he is the father of us all. And that's why St. John said, and that's why God's love for us is tremendous. That he loves us so much even when we were at sin. That he, sent, that he sent his son to redeem us. And by that redemption, we become now children of God. With Jesus, our older brother. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they did not know him. So when the world rejects us because we bring the value of the gospel, remember that the world rejects him and put him on that cross. I don't think that any one of us, including myself, is able to say that thing, that we are that pure that he was. He was without no sin. In fact, he comes to help us. He comes to heal us. He comes to feed us. He comes to embrace us. He comes to show his love for us. In fact, he said, there is no greater love than this, than one laid up his life for the one he loves. And what the world did? They laid him to the cross. And that's why he said, the world does not accept you neither if you come in his name. Because the world did not accept him when he came in due time.